Well, there's what? there's one more point I, I just want to ask Please. you about. Because, okay, one more thing. So you and Land, even though I don't think you know you disagreed with each other on this particular event, yeah. you both take different positions. And I just wanted to ask you about this real quick. Back in 2011, when the Chinese government banned all fiction it, depicting time travel, science fiction narratives, etc., um, you in less than nothing talk about how you view it as what China was doing, the Chinese government was doing, is trying to ban its people of thinking of alternate futures. Like it's a kind of ban on the future. Lan, though, as a supporter of China, he saw it as banning the past. It didn't, it, what the Chinese government didn't want is people fetishizing their feudal past, thinking about the past, because China's actually the driving agent of the future. And so for him, the ban is on the past. For you, the ban is on the future. And I'm just curious about what you would say, thinking about him saying the ban is on the past. Uh, uh, okay, I'll put it like this. Uh, of course, China, the Chinese state bureaucracy, their top ideologists like Van Kuning, are not idiots. I respect them very much. I never dismiss uh, Xi the present leader is some kind of a crazy old communist. No, he is based on a quite almost, I would say, accurate insight, accurate, uh, 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 accurate insight into, uh, into modern capitalism. His problem is how to retain American productivity, capitalist productivity, without the effect of social decay. Unfortunately, their solution is but I don't mean this term in a bad sense, a neo-fascist one. The typical neo-fascist solution is if you put, to, you want uh, uh, modernity without ideological modernization. You want the modern dynamic, you want conservative modernity. Their idea is modernity, but with Confucianism. I think it will not function, but... Uh, what I would say, controlling the past and so on, is that uh, I see here no big uh, uh, contradiction. My only point is the Hegelian one, there is no future. Every image of future that we, I'm more of a pessimist even here, we don't know what will happen. I'm not, I have many scenarios. What I just don't believe is there will be this one large, uh, let's drop the name God, but artificial intelligence, general flow, and so on and so on. If this happens, then we will not be able to use these terms which we project into it from today's experience. But my basic point, would have been that uh, uh, would have been that the couple of the terio terio territorialization and territorialization is not the ultimate point. That uh, again, we are maybe even rejoining the couple of desire and drive. Desire is in its nature, at least apparently, be territorializing. No, it moves always beyond. Yeah. Drive is territorializing. You yes. move in a closed loop and so on and so on. And I think that, that uh, again, in order for all this space to happen, you have to have a certain radical ontological gap. And that's why I'm looking also into this all this topic of quantum physics, void, and so on. Reality, in some sense, doesn't objectively exist. There is a multiplicity of inconsistencies and so on. There is a mess, a gap, a mega... The, uh, you know, even in my new book, I would like, if you don't put it on your web, uh, on the web, but keep it in your inner party circle. I would love to send you the manuscript of my new book, not freedom. Oh, that'd be great. I'd love which that. Will appear in in uh, uh, April called Christian Atheism. Okay. It's a provocative title. It's totally materialist. Don't be afraid. I didn't begin to <laughs> cover God or what. 
Well, my point is I try to sharpen my debate with Buddhists, you know. My point is that Buddhists have this opposition. Nirvana, this, it's not the same as what Land dreams about, but this kind of uh, eternal, it's not the proper term, it's not peace, but whatever. Flow or Annihilation, nothingness. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. my point is that the true choice is not between these two. My point is always a Hegelian one. Not can we arise from our finite world of desire to the void of nirvana, but the other way around. How, what went wrong with nirvana that we fall into finite world? And for me, the gap, this is the origin. The origin is a gap. And uh, nirvana is always already a retroactive projection okay. out of this gap. So uh, the same thing would be, I don't have time to go into it, my ultimate answer to, to Nick Land is that it's not we live today as humans and then we will blah, blah, blah. Already as humans today, we are not fully human. That's why I remain faithful to the old structuralist notion of anti-humanism, which means that in, in the part of being human, there is a constitutive madness. And this madness, which is not just human madness, which echoes some fundamental ontological disorder depicted, for example, by quantum physics of reality itself. That's the ultimate truth. We cannot do direct revolution, but the only way to lay the foundation for it is to do what you are doing to move the underground. It's a theoretically correct title. Welcome to Theory Underground where workers with earbuds can find genuine liberation from necessity. Research at Theory Underground focuses on what is most important for understanding our current situation. Theory of the subject, capital, time energy theory, critical media theory, CMT, and the most essential critiques necessary for understanding why the theory, ideology, and common sense of influencers left to right misses the mark. Theory Underground is a publishing house as well as lecture course and social media platform. You've been reading Underground Theory. Yes. And, uh, Amazing book. I'm a publisher and an editor. I run and review of books. Literally, it's my living. This is the best editing collection I've ever read. Jesus Christ. Seriously. This is a little experiment in what I, David McCarricker, can pull off without relying on the academy or the algorithmic dictates of the attention economy. I believe that I am, like so many others, pioneering a future in which educators can form learning webs that will make learning as a way of life enjoyable and emancipatory. However, before these tools become accessible, they have to be experimented with. That's why I built my own website and app using nothing more than my own saved wages five patrons, and some small classes of students over the last year. Of course, I also have had my wife Anne's moral support and help with accounting so that I don't get in trouble with the IRS or whatever. In less than a year, Theory Underground has already put out eight courses, two books, one, my book, Time Energy, and the other, Underground Theory, which has over 30 contributors, including works written by students at Theory Underground, some of my fellow travelers, and colleagues in the broader universe of Underground Theory. Beyond the books and courses, though, you will also find interviews, reading exegetical reaction sessions, and live weekly events for working class autodidacts, independent researchers, and renegade academics. These include a variety of clubs and cohorts that meet on a weekly or monthly basis. If you want to get involved, there are four main subscription levels. Think of it like a gym membership, but for your mind. The point is to make learning, practice, and theoretical comprehension a way of life. If I can triple my subscribers in the next two months, I can quit my gig at Amazon and focus on this work full time. All I need is a few more people at each of the levels or a couple big time patrons who just want to see it happen. Right now I am doing a patron and site subscriber drive. So excuse the commercial. But if you end up really liking what goes on at this channel, consider signing up soon. I hope that you either will or have enjoyed the program 
And also make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and leave this playing in the background all the time while you're doing other things. Playing long form theory underground content in the background while you do things has, in the near future, been scientifically proven to emancipate minds from the functional illiteracy imposed on workers by the structural stultification of time energy. This is achieved by re-territorializing circumspective concern. Also, to some degree, it is for the algorithm.